This webinar is getting started with online library research. This is a very basic overview of how to use our research databases. This is me. Um, I'm Marianne Cohen. I am the Associate Department Head at the Alpharetta Campus Library, and I'm also the designated online librarian, although all of our librarians are happy to help online students. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a little bit about the library website. I'm going to talk about some of the basic steps, things that you need to know before you start your research. We'll go over the Galileo search tool, and we'll look at how to go to specific databases. And then at the end, I'll give you more ways to ask for help. So first of all, I want to know a little bit more about you and what kind of issues that you are having. Um, could you tell me in the chat if you are online only, if you are face-to-face -face only, or if you are both? Um, are you a perimeter student and or Atlanta student? And is there anything specific that you hope to learn in this webinar? Like if you have a special class that you're, looking, you're attending for, or do you have an assignment or question? So just go ahead and type your answers in the chat. OK, online only, history class. That's great. Perimeter and online. Online and in class. A film assignment, OK. Um, OK. So where we, we are going to start with all of our research is the um, library homepage. And you can get to it from the menu at the, from either the perimeter version of the website or the uh, main GSU website. Um, but the direct URL is library.gsu.edu. Here's the library website live. Um, so you'll see the search widget here. And this is mostly what we're going to be looking at today. There's also a tab for the catalog. The catalog will give you things that are materially in the library. It also will link you to some online materials. Um, journals, if you know the specific name of the journal that you want to search, this is not where you search for journal articles. This is where you search for a journal by name, if you already know what you want. Some research guides. Um, if you need reserve materials, if you're an on-campus student and your teacher has put some materials on reserve, that's the tab that you use. There's a chat widget here if you want to ask librarians questions. Um, the library hours are down here, and you can click on these to get directions and um, more information about the hours. Um, navigating this site, there's these interactive tabs right here. So if you want information for you, I suggest, if, unless you're a graduate student, that you look at information for undergraduates. The Perimeter College link just tells you about the consolidation of the library. Distance Learners gives you a little bit of information, but most of the bulk of what you're going to need as a student is undergraduate students. Of course, if you're faculty, you go to faculty. So let me see what else I've got in the chat before I move on. One person wants to know better how to narrow down and focus their searches. Um, someone is taking history, English, and chemistry at the Dunwoody campus. OK, great. We can touch on all of those things. Um, so here are some things you need to think about before you get into the databases. Um, the first thing, you're going to have some sort of topic or research question. Now, this may not yet be a thesis statement. This just may be, I just want to talk about this. And you'll develop a thesis statement later. Or you may have your own question already formed in your mind. So I am going to say, as my example, what are the effects of a vegetarian diet on health? So one of the things that you want to do is begin a keyword list. And it helps to just maybe even write these down. So you look at your question, like what are the effects of a vegetarian diet on health? And you're, the way our um, database search engines work, you're not going to be able to type the whole question in. You're going to need to be able to pick out the most important words in this sentence. And they're usually the nouns. So the vegetarian and health are the two most important. I might end up with effects if I'm ending up with too much. I might want to play with that word effects. But I'm going to not start with the word effects yet. So think of some synonyms and some related words. So vegetarian might be vegetarianism. A related word would be vegan. It's not exactly the same, but it's close. 
plant-based diet is also similar. Health might go into nutrition or certain health aspects like heart disease or life expectancy. So then think about the kinds of sources you need. Now sometimes your instructor will tell you, you need to have one book, you need to have three journal articles, you need to have one web source, but not always. So think about the best kinds of sources that you need for your particular situation. So how deep do you want the information to be? Do you just want a list? Do you want scientific studies, et cetera? How scholarly is it? Um, if you are doing academic research, you probably want some scholarly articles. If you're just looking for your own personal information, you may not care about going that in depth, but recognize the importance of the scholarly information. Think about how current it needs to be, and how current it needs to be will probably vary by your topic. Um, vegetarian diet, most science topics are maybe five years if it's something that changes a lot, like astronomy, it might be shorter. If you're looking at hot topics like gay marriage or the legalization of marijuana, those things have changed a lot just in the last couple of years. So you need to be aware of, of those kinds of issues with your topic and pick dates appropriately. Now sometimes you won't know that yet, but when you start doing your background reading, you'll find out some important key dates that might change how you do your research. So then you need to think about what kinds of sources you need. Now the gold standard source is the scholarly journal. Um, some things you need to know about this is that they are written by experts for other experts. Um, the purpose is to communicate important advances in the field or add to scholarship in the field. Um, the articles are selected by peer review. Now this means that the, the person who has written this, the, the scientist or scholar in this field who has written the article, will submit this to a journal, and other scholars in the field will read this article and decide that it's a, a good contribution to the information in that field. So it tends to be written on a very high scholarly level, so it's not the easiest thing to understand usually, but it has the approval of the, of the scientist or the uh, professional scholar community, um, and they have said this is good research and these are, this is an important contribution to the field. So, um, and what it will look like is it will have data, it will have bibliography at the end, it will usually have an abstract at the beginning, it will have a certain look to it, and we'll see more of these as we start looking at examples. Another type is a the trade journal. This also is to communicate within an industry. So they're not going to explain things on a very basic level. They're going to talk about things like you already have some background in the information. However, it is reviewed by editors and it is not, doesn't go through that peer-reviewed process. Another type is just a regular magazine. Now these are written for the average person to understand. So you don't necessarily have to be an expert in the field to understand the articles. Um, they are generally written by journalists rather than experts in the field. The journalist may know a lot about the topic or they might do a lot of research. They should do a lot of research. But they didn't necessarily, they're not necessarily experts in the field in the same way as a scholar would be. The information is reviewed by editors, not peers. And then the purpose of a magazine is to appeal to the readers. So they are not choosing things because they're important contributions to the field. They are choosing things because they think their readers will like this and they will buy the magazine. Usually this is much more visually appealing than a scholarly journal and the references might be in text or none. They're not going to have a bibliography at the end. Usually the data is on the light side. Um, it'll just give you a summary of the polls or surveys or whatever the data is. It's not going to give you all of the details as though you wanted to recreate the study yourself. A newspaper is similar to a magazine except it comes out more often. So when you're comparing these kinds of sources, the scholarly journal is the most scholarly and the magazines and newspapers would be the least. 
The publication on a scholarly journal takes longer because it has such a long involved process and the newspaper is the fastest. We also have um, books and ebooks. The authors and the scholarliness varies depending on um, who wrote it and what their, their goal was in writing the book. The intended audience varies. How current the information is vary. Um, some of the ways you can tell about this is to look at the publisher and use your judgment. So in this one, you can tell even by the on the back of the book, it says the author is a food journalist and restaurant critic. And this one by the Oxford University Press, the author is a professor at the University School of Public Health. So this second one is going to be the more scholarly. Um, there's also some video sources, and like books, these can vary quite a bit depending on what the intended audience is. And then, of course, you have the web. And the web can vary a lot. There is some good information on the web. It is harder to tell quite often if the information on the web is reliable or not. Um, the web can be very good for very current information because it can change almost instantly. Um, it's good for local information that might not have enough interest to have print resources. Uh, but you, of course, you have to be very careful when you're using web resources. So do you have any questions so far? Uh, or start, am I suggesting to start with the peer-reviewed documents, or does it just depend? I would suggest not, just because they're much harder to understand. So if you are new to the topic, you might want to start with something easier, like a book or a magazine article, until you feel like you've gotten enough background information to understand the peer-reviewed documents. Um, in fact, if your teacher requires you to use peer-reviewed documents, you still might want to start with some background information if it's not a topic that you already know something about, and you just wouldn't use those as your sources. They're just your background. Back in the olden days, we used to tell everybody to start with the encyclopedia. Um, we don't really do that anymore. A lot, of, a lot of students actually start their research at Wikipedia for the very same reason. Um, again, it's not the best source, oftentimes not even a good source, but it can give you some background and then you, you use the other sources as your, your real source of information. Okay, so where do you find these sources? You've decided whatever it is you want. You're going to, well, just use Cynthia's example. We are going to start with uh, magazine articles, get some background information, and then, or maybe a book, and then we're going to go to scholarly journal articles. So that's, that's our plan. So, so, of course, on the web, you find some websites. There are some journals, magazines, and newspapers that publish on the web. An increasing number of them are publishing on the web, including scholarly journals. So if you find scholarly journals on the web, you need to verify that they're peer-reviewed. You look in the about the journal part, and you can find out um, if they are peer-reviewed scholarly journals. Uh, the research databases that we have have a lot of different kinds of sources, and many of them are not available on the web. So if you are only using Google for your research, you're missing a lot of really good sources. So now we're going to talk about databases and how to use them. And at this point, I'm going to go to the website there. All right, so we're going to put, this is a this, um, discover search. And the discover search searches many, but not all, of our databases. If you have gone to the Galileo interface, you'll see, um, anyway, it will still have these same choices. It will have a discover search box, that's the big search box in Galileo. It will have databases by subject, it will have databases by name, and it will have a journals search. But we're going to start from the library website, and one reason, good reason to start from the library website is that it will not ask you for the Galileo password. But if you go to Galileo, it's going to ask you for the Galileo password. The nice thing, one nice thing that Georgia State has done is made it so you don't have to have that password. So if you go from the library homepage, vegetarian, oh, it remembers my practice, vegetarian and health, um, it will ask you, if you're off campus, it will ask you for your GSU username and password. And that is the same as your iCollege login. 
So if that doesn't work, contact a librarian and we'll see what if we can find out what the problem is. Okay. So for vegetarian and health, I got 187 over 187,000 results. That's a lot of results. Um, and quite often, students feel overwhelmed by what they're seeing here. So let's ex let's explore this a little bit. So the kind of resource is this icon over here. This one's an academic journal. This one is an ebook. This is some news videos. I don't even know why they put all those there. This is a book. Now, sometimes the books will be ebooks, and sometimes they'll just be book books. But this one's located at print books, I should say. This one's located at Dunwoody. This one's an ebook located in eBrary. Um, so you can see what kind of resources there are there. Periodicals, usually a magazine. Now, I can narrow down my results over here on the left. So up here at the top, it tells me what limiters I already have in place. And these are the default ones. It's searching within the full text of articles. It's going to give you similar subjects. And it is available in our library. So one thing you can do is limit it to full text. So full text means I want to be able to look at it on my computer right now without getting out of the chair. I don't want to have to order it from anywhere. I just want to be able to look at it right now. And when you see these, find it at GSU, a lot of these are not available full text. It'll tell you about the article, but then you have to track it down. Um, so if you want to get rid of those and say, nope, I only want stuff I can see right now, click on the full text limiter. Um, then you can also narrow it to things that are in the library catalog, which would mean things that are physically in the library. Um, scholarly journals, you can use that here. You can narrow by date. Remember how we talked about how the date was important? So for my topic, I'm going to narrow it to 2010 to present. So I eliminated a lot of articles, and I'm down to 71,000. Um, and then as I scroll down, I've got source types. So I said academic journals, magazines, books, ebooks, and if you click on show more, it'll give you even more. So you can got trade journals, I mean trade publications, conference materials, videos, all different kinds of things. I'm not going to choose any of those right now just for demonstration purposes. Then uh, subjects, this can list the major subjects in the article, so you can use that limiter also. And then there's some other things down here if you need a particular location or language, etc. Now the sort here is by relevance, which is what the computer says is the most relevant results based on your search terms and what you have put in there. Now it's not as good a judge as what you think. So I suggest that you not just trust this if you're not seeing, if you feel like you're on the right track but it's not exactly right, Go on to the next page and, and look beyond the first page. The way Google and those kinds of search engines tend to work is they, they base some of their results on what the most popular results are and what you have looked at before. This, this, this is not going to do that. This is not going to try to guess based on what other people have looked at or what you have looked at in the past. So you might need to dig a little bit more than you are used to doing if you're used to searching in Google. So do you have any questions about, about narrowing in Galileo? So again, I'm just going to keep talking. If you have any questions, just type them in the chat and I'll come back to them. So let's look at an example here. I am going to go to, I chose one as, as an example. I'm going to choose Where's the Beef? That's the name of the article. It was written by Jill Waldbeiser, however you pronounce it. I always seem to pick articles. I can't pronounce people's names. Um, it was published in Women's Health. That is a periodical, so it's a magazine. Um, in December of 2015, volume 12, issue 10 pages 140 to 147, and it's eight pages long, where you see the P, let me make this bigger, where you see the P after the, um, the number, that's how many pages it is. And then it gives you some subjects, and the subjects can tell you two things. The subjects can tell you um, more about what the article is about, 
This one is vegetarians, mental health, meat, anxiety, and depression. So this sounds more like it's going to talk about mental health than the physical health benefits. Um, and it also could give me some other search terms. So I might want to add mental health or anxiety to my list of search terms. This one comes in both HTML and PDF. But if I want to know more about the article, I can either, I can, the quick way is to just do like this and hover over this little thing, and it will pop up the, um, some information about the article. But if I really want to go into more detail, click on the title, and it will take you to this information about the article. Now this is called, and this is not that important, but just so you know, it's called a detailed record. So this is a record of the article, um, and it tells you more about the article. So again, you've got the title, the author, where it came from, um, it, is a, it is an article, um, the subjects, and an abstract. And an abstract is a summary of the article. So before you read all eight pages, you can read this paragraph and decide if this is relevant to what you're looking for. Now, one of the things students ask me a lot is, can I just use the abstract? Um, Generally, no. I mean, it is possible to cite an abstract, but no, you should, this abstract is just a summary. You should read the whole article. The abstract is just to guide you to decide if you want to invest your time in reading all eight pages. So don't just use the abstract as your source. Now, this article, one reason I chose it, is that it comes in two formats. It comes in HTML and it comes in PDF. Sometimes it only comes in one type. It doesn't always come in both. So if you want the HTML, you just scroll down. This is all the words from the article. It doesn't necessarily have pictures or charts or graphs or anything like that. It just has all the words. Um, and it also has a feature that you can have the computer read it to you. So if you're somebody that, that would help, you can do that. Now, it's just a computer reading it, so it's not like books on tape or anything like that. But um, if that helps you, it, that feature is there. Um, also over on the side here, there's some tools where you can have this printed, and it will print both citation information and the um, HTML version. You can email it to yourself, and that's a great way to keep track of your articles that you found is just email them to yourself. And one tip a student actually told me she did this is that she puts the title of the email is the assignment. So it would be like English 1101 argumentative speech. And she puts that for all of her articles that she's found for that assignment. And then when she searches her email, she can get all of her articles together. I thought that was brilliant. It's like a future librarian. Uh, you can save it to file. Um, and you can get a citation. Now these citations, I have to tell you, are actually pretty terrible in terms of their formatting. It's very handy, but you can look at this. If you're familiar with um, MLA, you'll see they've capitalized the author's name completely. That's wrong. They put a weird capital S in Where's the Beef. Uh, they capitalized the. So there's all kinds of formatting mistakes in these. Usually the basic content is correct. Um, but just don't cut and paste this into your paper because you're responsible for your citations. Usually your teacher is not going to accept, well, that's what it said in the database. So, um, but if you're like me, it's easier to do this and fix it than it is to start from scratch. So, okay, and the other thing is a permalink. Um, do not copy and paste the URL up here. It will not get you back here. Um, go to the permalink, and that will give you a permanent link if you want to keep a copy of the links or send them to your friends or whatever. Um, so that's, that's how you get a URL that will get you back here. Okay, now let's say we want to go to the PDF. Instructions for the permalink, yes. Okay, just go over here to permalink, and it pops up a permalink right here. And you just copy that and paste it wherever you want to save your permalink, and then you'll have it, and you can go back there. Okay, so let's say we want to go to the PDF. So we click on the PDF, and the PDF is a scan of the article as it appeared in print. So it's exactly as though you were reading it in print form. So it's going to give you charts, pictures, graphs, 
advertisements, page numbers, everything just like it was physically sitting in your hand. So here's the article, and you can see how different this looks from the HTML. It's taking a while to load because it's a picture. You can see how pretty it is, So because this is from a magazine, so it's much prettier than a journal article would be, usually. Uh, so all the words are the same, but you can see how it's different. Now this would make a big difference if there was some sort of chart or graph that you needed to really see the comparison in this, in this case, it's just sort of more aesthetically pleasing. Now, one thing that's, that you need to know about the PDF, if you go over here and you use this print icon, it's only going to print that citation part. If you want to print the PDF or save the PDF, you need to save it from here. So that's kind of important to know so you don't um, lose the article. So do you have any questions so far? Okay, next I want to look at an ebook. So I am going to choose. Let me narrow it to ebook. Here we go. This is the one I wanted. We have different ebook providers and the interfaces are a little bit different and most of them are EBSCO, so I wanted to show you the EBSCO interface. So here's an ebook, it says ebook the author, the publication information, um, the subjects, and it comes in three different formats. It can, well, actually two. It, you can download it, you can read it in PDF, or you can read it as EPUB. So I'm going to click on the title to get more information. Again, it gives me a description. This is not exactly an abstract. It's just kind of a description more subjects, etc. And then it gives me some pages, relevant pages from the book based on my search terms. So this one, the whole book is about vegetarianism. The whole book is not necessarily about health aspects, a lot of it is recipes. So it's given me some suggestions about parts of the book that are relevant to me. There are also um, a table of contents, and this is a good way to navigate the book or find out what's in it before you commit to looking at the whole thing. So here's the chapters. And it looks like um, benefits for weight loss and for life, um, some other things about health. So I can either use these up here, I can use the table of contents. There's all kinds of ways that I can try to get to the part of the book that I want. So I've decided, yes, I want to look at this book. I tried to download an ebook the other day. It saved to my Dropbox. When I tried to open it, there was a lot of DOS language. Am I not saving it correctly? I am not sure. Um, but watch this and see if this helps you. OK, so I'm going, there's a couple things you can do. One is to just open the PDF or the EPUB on your computer. And this is what I would suggest that you do. Um, you open it, you read it. And then when you close it, it goes away. And it's available for the next person. Some of these are unlimited access, like this one. Uh, everybody in the whole school could be looking at this book at the same time. Um, others are limited to, say, one person. So when you open it, it's unavailable to other people. Um, so unless you need to read it offline, one, it's simpler. And two, it frees it up for other people if you just read it while you're connected online. So I would only download it if you needed to read it offline, if you wanted to read it on MARTA or you wanted to do something like that. So that's where you would download it. If you're going to download it to your mobile device, you're probably going to need to download some extra software. Um, we have a guide that tells you how to do this in our research guides. Um, but I'm going to just do it for now from my computer. So I'm going to click on PDF full text. And this is the interface. So over here on the left, it's giving me the table of contents again. And I can expand it and go to parts of the book that I'm interested in. Um, I can resize the pages. So I can see the whole page at one time, or I can see it in width etc. Um, I can 
email some pages, and there's limits to how many pages. This one is, only gives me six pages. Most of them gives you 60 pages. Some of them give you up to 100. Some of them are actually zero. So if you see that it says zero pages, it's not that you did anything wrong. It's just that the publisher's not going to let you copy any pages. Um, so I can do six pages. I just email it to myself. Again, there's a citation helper, an option to download. You can also search within the book. So if I decided, oh, I'm going to look, and I haven't tested this out, if I wanted to look at mental depression, I can look and see if it has those words anywhere. So it does talk about mental. I don't see anything about depression. So it gives me all the pages of the book that have my search terms in them. Um, and then you can go back to the contents. So does that does that help at all, Cynthia? I'd, OK. I'd have to know exactly what book it is and what, you know, provide. Um, and, ebook provider it was and all that kind of stuff. So we could we could work that out in a chat conversation later if uh, <laughs> may not be you. Some of these kind of get funky sometimes. And sometimes they're loaded wrong. So it might have just been bad luck. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was the advanced search. And you can also get to this from the library homepage. I just clicked on advanced search within this. So you can make more complicated searches this way. So you can put similar terms in here. So I might want to put depression or mental health or anxiety as my search terms in here. So vegetarian or plant-based diet. So what I'm doing is I'm putting one concept on each line and then I'm connecting the similar concepts with or. So this will give me all of these combinations of vegetarian and depression, vegetarian and mental health, vegetarian and anxiety, like that. So um, it allows me to make more complex searches. Also, if I had a particular author or something like that, I could use a drop down and say I wanted that particular author, or I wanted that particular title, that particular journal, etc there. Um, I can also narrow by discipline. So if I'm looking at this from the point of view of a, a nurse um, or a nutritionist, I can choose nursing and allied health. If I am looking at this from the point of view of public health, or maybe I'm looking at it as a psychologist and I really want psychology journals, not medical journals, things that are more about the nutrition. So you can narrow down your subject by the discipline that you're interested in. There's also some other uh, limiters down here where you can narrow by date and all sorts of things before you even start. If you're in nursing or dental hygiene, something like that, you can narrow by different types of articles over here. But usually that is sufficient for, for most of our freshmen and sophomores. So do you have any questions about the Discover Search? I am going to move on to looking at specific databases. Now, there are times that you're not going to want to use the Discover Search. Let's see if I can get back to my PowerPoint here. OK, so why would you not use the Discover Search? These are some of the reasons. Not all of the databases are in there. You're going to miss out on a whole lot of good stuff, especially about literature. Um, we have a lot of literature databases that are not included in the Discover search. So Discover can actually be pretty frustrating to look for some literature topics. You can, it, you can include it. I'm not saying you can't. But Bloom's Literature, Gale Virtual Reference Library, Opposing Viewpoints, anything ProQuest, LexisNexis, none of those are in the Discover search. Also, some databases have specialized search features. For example, in business, medicine, psychology, literature, history, there's special search features that are included. This example, which I realize is hard to see, is from Business Source Complete. This is a company information search. And you can narrow companies by executive names, by the revenue of the company, 
the number of employees it has, its location, whether it's publicly or privately held. These are things that are important to people who are looking for business information. These searches are, features are not available in Discover, so you would go to the specific database. Um, Choosing a specific database will help you limit by subject. If you go to Bloom's Literature, everything in there is about literature. If you go to Nursing and Allied Health, everything is intended for people who are working in those fields. Also by format, if you go to Films on Demand, everything's going to be film or video. So how do you find these databases? You can either look by subject or by name. So to go by subject, I'm going to go to go to databases by subject, and I will choose literature since somebody brought that up. So I'm going to go to, it's not under literature, it's under English. And we have a lot, a lot of English databases. So there's 44 of them. Now sometimes, like if we go to psychology, Wait, that's the English databases that start with P. Sometimes the librarian will put a best, best box up at the top and it'll just say, you know, this is a good one or two or three to start with. Um, they didn't do that for English. So I will suggest let's go, actually the one up, yeah, okay, let's go to Bloom's Literature. So this is a database that is about literature. Everything in it is about literature and it's not in the Discover search. So here it is, and you can look for information by the authors, the works, various characters. Um, there's things about movements. You can, um, Blooms has a how to write about series if you're kind of stumped about, you know, what do I say about Emily Dickinson? You can go and it'll give you some ideas. Not going to give you the paper to copy. It will just tell you um, some ideas about what you might want to talk about. So those are some of the things that are in this, and you won't find it in Discover. You can also go to the research guides. You can look for a research guide on your subject. So if you were going to look for English, others, different librarians make different ones, so you may find more than one that fits your topic, but here's one that I made, English 1102 um, online, so you could look there and see what I have recommended for literature in that class. The other thing you can do is if you know a specific database. So a database that we recommend a lot for English 1101 and for um, speech classes is Opposing Viewpoints. Um, this is a database that specialize in controversial and current topics. So what I did, I kind of went too fast, go to databases by name A through Z, then go to the first letter of the database you want, in this case it's O, and you scroll to opposing viewpoints, here it is. Now some of these are going to have some special instructions, let's see if I see one on this page. I don't see one on this page. Some of these might say something like Atlanta only, Atlanta campus only. This was because they couldn't negotiate a agreement for everybody. Most of these are going to be so high level that perimeter campus people might not want them anyway. You can usually get them downtown. Some of them will have special instructions where you have to register. So here's one, Art Store. Users must first register for an account on campus with the GSU email address. So um, if you're having access trouble, go back and read the description and see if you need some sort of special permission or some sort of special account to access the database. Opposing viewpoints, you don't have to. You just click on it and you should be able to get in. And here's the database. Um, you can navigate it through this menu here. You can use a search box, and it will have, you know, it looks different from EBSCO because it is Gale, but it will give you some resources that you couldn't find otherwise, and a lot of students find that this particular database is very helpful for persuasive speeches and papers. So do you have any more questions? Do you feel like you could get started with 
research in the databases? Yes, at least one person says yes. Okay, at least two people. Okay, so let me tell you, a lot of times people watch the webinar and they feel very confident and then they go in there and things go wrong. So how do you get more help? So we're going to go back to the library website and there's this chat box over here. And this is staffed roughly during, uh, till I think it's 9 to 6. We try to staff it till 8, but sometimes there's not somebody working from 6 to 8. So if you can um, do it during regular business hours up till 6. Um, also, um, the weekends are a little bit spotty right now due to staffing. Um, however, if no one is here to chat with, or even if they are, you can search for an answer in our knowledge base. Now, these aren't going to be really specific, but they're more general, like, you know, what's the difference between a keyword and a subject, what's an abstract, those sorts of things. And it'll also give you an opportunity to email your question. And then the next time that a librarian is at work that will answer the question, um, you can, you'll get an email back. Also, you can call us. There's nothing wrong with using the phone to call the reference desk at the library. Um, you can come in, or if you want to just communicate with me, that's fine too. I, if I'm super busy, I might forward your email to someone else, but I know who's good at what, and I will send it to a good librarian. I think that's it. Do you have any questions at all? Okay, if um, you may go ahead and keep asking questions if you have questions. Um, if you would give us a few, a little bit of feedback, there is a survey, it is one question and a blank box. If you would fill out the survey and let us know how we're doing, that would be helpful to me. Any tips for improvement? Our next webinar that we have coming up is Later in February, I don't have the date in front of me, it is about evaluating your sources. So we, there's been a lot of talk lately about fake news, so we're going to try to touch on that as well as how to tell about the other kinds of sources besides news. Um, and then we have one later in March about literature. Um, so if you have some literature assignments that are due later in the semester, we also have um, archive of the literature webinar from last semester on the, on the website. So I appreciate your coming, and I will sit here until everyone is gone if, in case you have any questions. So thank you again for coming. Good luck in all your research.